In terms of appreciating the reliability of the Greek of the New Testament, we've talked a lot about different so-called text types and different changes. And as an expert in the field, I'm sure lay people are wondering, well, what is his estimation of the reliability of the actual Greek text? If it's being changed from edition to edition, what are those changes like? And then what degree of confidence can I have when I open my best Bible translation <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> I'm I'm looking at, you know, an accurate representation of what yeah would have left the hands of uh, yeah. Paul's amanuenses. Yeah, good. First thing to say is probably listeners should know that English translations today are not always translating the same Greek text, right? They have to make decisions at these places where there's difficult variants now. And something like the one we looked like, the cry of dereliction, is probably going to come out in the wash into English, right? I'm not sure you can tell from the English always which Greek text they're, <laughs> they're translating. But in other places, it, it certainly does. They have to make a decision to make. So from edition to edition... Overall, the changes are not dramatic, okay? The, edition, the two editions I worked most, when I did my dissertation, the new edition was the Nesselon 28, and the changes they had made were only in what we call the Catholic letter, so James through the book of Jude. Mm -hmm. And they made, oh man, I used to have this number off the top of my head, guys, but I'm getting rusty now. The dissertation is in the rearview mirror. There's something like 40 changes, okay? And a lot of them are like, they changed, they, they a chi was in brackets, and now it's not in brackets anymore. Okay. Okay. They added a de. There's an article there where there didn't used to be. Okay. Now, the two in the Catholic letters, I'm just going to use these because these are ones I'm most, they're fresh. They're, they were seared into my mind thanks to my dissertation. Okay. Two big ones in the Catholic letters. One is in Jude chapter five, right. where the text, there's a couple options there. The two dominant ones are that Jesus led a people out of the land of Egypt or the Lord led a people out of the land of Egypt. Okay. Now, the, to use the human name Jesus there is pretty striking, okay? The Nestle Elan 28 goes with Jesus, where the Nestle Elan 27 went with the Lord, okay? Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, some English translations already had Jesus. The ESV had Jesus before the Nestle Elan 28. People often get this backwards. They think that ESV changed it because of Nestle Elan. They did not. Wow. One of my colleagues here is Wayne Grudem. Wayne Grudem is at one of the editors of the ESV. He was very proud <laughs> That, that they had this change before the Nestle Elan 28 did. <laughs> and they got it right before the, the editors of the Green Testament did. But in any case, that's that's a big one that people point out. The other the other really notable one is 2 Peter 3.10, where Peter is talking about the end, okay, and the world being judged by God and um, God judging the world with, with fire. And he's made a reference to the flood before this. And there are people in Peter's audience that are skeptical that Jesus is even coming back, that there even is going to be a final judgment. They say the world is just continues as it always has. And Peter's essentially rebuking that idea. And he says in verse 10 there of chapter three, the world and all her works will be what? There's a number of readings will be burned up, which fits very well in the context, but is found in our later manuscripts will be found from a form of Heurisco. Okay. Hmm. Or, and here's what the Nestle Elan 20, 28 says, they conjectured, they guessed. They think all the readings in our manuscripts are wrong, and they went with will not be found. So they added the word not. Hmm. Okay, That's one where you look at it and you go, okay, they've completely changed the meaning. They flipped it from will be found to will not be found. <laughs> okay, Here's the interesting thing about that one, actually. <laughs> People sometimes forget that textual variants have to be interpreted in their context. OK, so you might look at two readings that in your apparatus are opposites. One has the word not <laughs> and one doesn't. But when you look at what English translations do with these two readings, they actually come out in very similar places. So what's interesting you'll find is that take a translation like the CSB, which gives you both these readings. It gives you one in the text and one in the footnote. OK, in the text, they translate Heurisco without the word not as the earth and all her works will be found out. Okay, then in the footnote, it says alternate, whatever, you know, however, some readings say or whatever, will not be found. We see what they've done. They've they've interpreted the word Heurisco differently, depending on whether it has the word ook there. Why? Because they are because is it because they're stupid or they're nefarious? No, I don't think so. I think it's because they're reading each of those variants in its context. And they're going, look, if we have a form of the word Heurisco here without the word not. It has to, in context, mean something like the earth and all her works will be exposed in the judgment. Mm. So found out, right? Discovered, you might say. <laughs> okay. 
But if you add the word not in there, then it means something like you can't find them because they've been destroyed. They don't exist like they used to before. They've been burned. They've been, mm -hmm. I think that means purified, okay? But they've been so purified, there's so much evil in the world that once you purify it, the thing that comes out on the other side is like, wow, that's dramatically different, you know? Like, so that, but that's a big one. The Nestle Law 28 has the word ook there before the verb. Okay, now there's some debate about what the word heurisco can even mean there. So we'll let Kevin sort that out for us. But but that's one where then what makes it significant, probably most of all, is besides the fact that, oh, they've worked out of the word not, is there's no Greek manuscript support at all for the word not. You have the word not in a few Coptic manuscripts and a few Syriac manuscripts, but that's it. Mm -hmm. So if you're going just on the Greek manuscripts, this is what we call a conjecture, where the editors think all the Greek manuscripts have the wrong reading and they have to guess. New Testament scholars have, do not do that very often. The Nestle Law 28 has a total of two of those conjectures in the whole thing, in the whole Greek mm -hmm. Testament. Okay, that's very few when you compare it to classical works, where scholars. I mean, if you think of the Gospel of Thomas, there are more than two places probably where that that one copy of Thomas has it wrong, and scholars mm -hmm. have to conjecture and say, "Nah, we think what it must say in the original is this." 